Hi guys! This is the notes video for lesson 6.4 on explicit formulas. So in the past two lessons we've been talking about recursive formulas which tell us how to find the next term in a sequence. We're now going to look at explicit formulas um, which do something a little bit different. So the problem with recursive formulas is that we only get the next term. So if I ask you to find the 100th term in a sequence using the recursive formula, you would have to calculate the second term, then the third term, then the fourth term, then the fifth, then the sixth, blah, 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 all the way to the 100th. You'd have to calculate the terms one by one because you can only get the next term from that formula. So that's going to be annoying and it's going to take a long time. The explicit formula, on the other hand, lets you jump directly to the 100th term, or any term. So they're a little bit faster. So an explicit formula is a formula uh, that lets you find any term in a sequence and the way you're going to find the term is using the term number. So if I ask you to find the 100th term, you're going to use that 100 in the formula to find the 100th term. We'll see how that plays out in the example video. Okay, for this video, we're going to go through and come up with an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence. So in this video, we're just going to figure out what those formulas should be in kind of their general form. And then in the examples video, we're going to use them with some actual sequences. Okay, so let's start with arithmetic. Remember, that means adding. Um, and let's set up kind of a general sequence here. So our first term, that's u sub 1, right? That's the symbol for the first term. And arithmetic sequences have common differences. That's the number we're adding every time. So we're going to call that d for common difference. Okay, so given that, let's find some terms in our sequence. We know that the first term is u sub 1. Then to get the next term, we're going to take that first term and add the common difference to it. So if the first term is u sub 1, the second term will be u sub 1 plus d. To get the third term, we're going to add the common difference again. So we get u sub 1 plus d plus d. To get the fourth term, we add it again, u sub 1 plus d plus d plus d. And the fifth term we add it again, u sub 1 plus d plus d plus d plus d. So we see that we're starting with our first term and then we're adding the common difference a bunch of times. So if we want to get to any term in the sequence, what we really want to know is how many times do you need to add the common difference. So let's look and see if we can come up with a pattern. Okay, first term, that's just u sub 1. Second term, that was u sub 1 plus d just one time, right? Okay, third term was u sub 1 plus d two times, right? d plus d. Fourth term was u sub 1 plus d three times. So d times 3. And fifth term was u sub 1 plus d four times. So plus d times 4. Okay, so now let's look for a relationship between our term number, because we're supposed to be able to use the term number, and the number of times we're adding our common difference. Okay, when it's term 2, we add it one time, term 3, we add it two times, term 4, we add three times, term 5, we add four times. So we can see here we're always adding the common difference one less time than the term number, right? 
it's term five, one less than that is four. Term four, one less than that is three. Okay, that's what we're gonna use. So now let's say we're at our nth term, a random term in the sequence. We wanna figure out what that term would be. So we see here, we always are starting with u sub one. So we're gonna have u sub one. We know we need to add the common difference. The question is how many times? And we just said it should be one less than the term number, right? When it was term five, we added four times. When it was term four, we added three times. So when it's term n, we wanna add d one less times than that. n take away one times, take away one from n. So that's exactly what we're gonna write. We're gonna add d n take away one times. One less than the term number. Term number is n, we add d n take away one times. And this is going to get us any term in the sequence. We start with our first term, and this tells us how many times to add the common difference. OK, so we've got our formula. For any term in the sequence, u sub n, you can find it by taking the first term and then adding the common difference n minus 1 times. N represents the term number, so if I give you 100, you can just plug 100 in here and calculate the 100th term. That's our explicit formula. Yay, we did it! Okay, we're going to go through that again with geometric, and then again in the examples video we'll actually do this with some actual sequences. Okay, so for geometric, our setup is going to be similar. We have our first term u sub 1. This time though we have a common ratio, that's the number we multiply by, and so we're going to use r for ratio. So let's find some terms in our sequence. First term, u sub 1. Second term, we take u sub 1 and then we're going to multiply by our ratio, right? Okay. Third term, we take u sub 1, we multiply by our ratio, and then we multiply by the ratio again. Fourth term, we multiply by the ratio again, so we have times r times r times r. And fifth term, we multiply by the ratio yet again. So times r times r times r times r. All right, so let's simplify these and see if we can find a pattern. So, okay, uh, second term, we had u sub 1 and we multiplied by r just one time. So that's r to the first power. I just multiplied by r one time. Third term, I had u sub 1, and then I multiplied by r twice, right? r times r. And the way we write r times r in shorthand is r to the second power, right? Second power means r times r. Okay, fourth term we had u sub 1, and then we multiplied by r three times. r times r times r, that's r to the third power. And fifth term we had u sub 1, and then we multiplied by r four times, so that's r to the fourth power. Okay, so now we want to look for a relationship between our term number and the number of times we're multiplying by r, that exponent. And just like with the arithmetic, it's one less than the term number. For the fifth term, we multiply by r four times. For the fourth term, we multiply by r three times. So let's use that for the nth term. If we're at a random term in the sequence, we know we need to start with our first term. We know we're going to multiply by our common ratio, and we're going to multiply by that common ratio one less than the term number. So if our term number is n, we multiply by n minus 1 times, by r, n minus 1 times. So our exponent will be n minus 1. 
one less than the term length. Okay, so let's put that into our official formula. U sub n, the nth term in our sequence, is going to be our first term times the common ratio n minus 1 times. And so then if we give you n a term number, you can just plug it right in there and find the nth term. All right, that's it for the notes. Head over to the examples video to see how this works with some actual sequences.